I'm guessing most of you know about the final experiment, and if you've been keeping up, you know a flat earther named Joe Hanvey has been giving Will Duffy a bit of trouble, saying he could demonstrate a 24-hour sun on a scale model of the Gleason map. Hanvey had a few false starts on this. It ended on sort of a cliffhanger where he had supposedly really solved it this time, but there was no video yet. We kept getting glimpses that he would later delete, and the ball was still in his court. Well, as luck would have it, Joe Hanvey spoke at a Flat Earth conference this weekend, and I went specifically to hear him. What can I say? I don't like cliffhangers. Now, the first time he mentioned the 24-hour sun, he said it was something I never should have gotten involved with. He apparently had deleted all his videos on it, and had no further plans to publish anything for Globers to examine. Rats. However, this did not mean he was giving up on building or refining the demo, and he was plenty happy to share it with the Flat Earthers who were there that day. He had it set up in a back room, and after the conference, I caught a chance to see it myself. I asked permission to record, and he said yes, while he explained and demonstrated it just for me. You see how it's bending the light upwards? You see how the realm the realm is being projected upwards onto the dome itself, right? Yeah. And you see how the, the latitude lines create these circular arcs, and then the, the red clock dial is arced up across, and it's layered in there. Focus in this way towards this part of the dome. So you're focusing here. You're going to see, as I move this light, you're going to see an apparent light move the opposite direction. You see that? If you throw ether back in the mix, you still have to go yeah. back to When I move yeah, around the tropic of yeah. Capricorn, you can see that, that opposite rotation of the source light. Yeah. Because of the bending of the light, people don't understand what that does to the cardinal directions. And if I draw a north, south, east, and west cross right here, when the source is in the west, it's going to show up, the, the apparent's going to show up in the east. When the source is in the, in the east, the apparent's going to show up in the west. That's why you get that apparent counterclockwise rotation. It's not an actual counter, it's apparent. And by the way, yes, that is Austin Whitsitt's voice in the background. He was standing just off camera to the right in another conversation. So, first of all, thank you, Joe. Secondly, I may have had a eureka moment on what was going through his mind. I couldn't get him to 100% clarify, so I still could be wrong. And if so, Joe, please feel free to correct me. But notice what he emphasizes right here. You see how it's bending the light upwards? You see how the, the realm is being projected upwards onto the dome itself, right? Because it's bending that light up. If you fold that down, then you're actually getting a counterclockwise rotation. I was also struggling with an apparent contradiction. On my screen, the real and virtual suns were both clearly rotating counterclockwise, but Joe was saying they were moving opposite directions from one another. When I move this direction, well, so the, the apparent light is moving the opposite that. direction, so the opposite of clockwise is sure counterclockwise. This is something that flat earthers are notoriously confused by, so it's worth a moment to explain. The terms clockwise and counterclockwise are not fully defined simply by a rotational movement in 3D space. They also include an implicit observer direction. So the exact same rotational movement can be called clockwise, and then switch to counterclockwise by only a change in observer location. When we say the sun, moon, and stars in the northern hemisphere rotate counterclockwise around Polaris, that's looking upward, because we usually talk about this in the context of photographing star trails. But what happens when the observer is near the exact middle of the rotational movement? The final experiment is talking about a movement of the sun 360 degrees around the observer, very low on the horizon. Here, the observer is almost coplanar with the circular movement, so you can't photograph the whole path from one angle, and it's ambiguous which term should be used. I have heard both terms used. It's clockwise looking upward, and counterclockwise looking downward. In the Antarctic, the sun always moves from the right to the left. Always. Right to left. So regarding Joe Hanvey's demonstration, the fact that he insisted they were opposite movements while on my screen they were clearly the same, this actually gave me a clue that he was evaluating the real sun from above looking down, but the virtual one from below looking up. This seemed strange, because the counterclockwise movement he achieved for the virtual sun would only be correct looking downward. Somehow, Joe Hanvey's camera was looking up at the sky, but he was talking like it was looking downward at the ground. So unfortunately, I did not get this moment on video because I was trying to use my phone to help illustrate my question. I asked, 
I'm confused because you're saying they're opposite, but if you look at my screen here, they're both counterclockwise. At that point, he took my phone and held it face up like this and pointed at the virtual sun and said, yes, if you look at this, this is facing downward and it's counterclockwise. I said, so you're looking at the sun on this reflection of the map behind it? He said something that made me think he still didn't quite understand the question, but it was generally affirmative. So I think my hunch was right. I didn't want to press it too much in the moment for fear of frustrating him. So I think that Joe Hanvey considers this a valid demo of the 24-hour sun, not because if we put a camera at Union Glacier on the map and looked up, we would see something directly corresponding to the 24-hour sun, but because in his demo, we see a virtual overhead map of it projected into the sky. Joe, if this is true, then I'm afraid your demo falls a bit short on multiple levels. First, we don't expect to see a map of Antarctica projected in the sky when they go there. Second, even if we did, this only happens on your model in the northward sky looking across the middle. And third, even here, the map is reversed. It's a mirror image. So it doesn't even accurately show counterclockwise motion on the map of Earth. In order to be accurate, we would have to mirror it, which would make the motion clockwise. And it also fails on a fourth level. Joe, your demo only works because you made the floor of the dome reflective. The Earth isn't all reflective. To 100% confirm this, I made a CGI replica of his setup. You can see right here, it produces the same illusion of a counterclockwise sun over the reflected map. But how exactly is the light bouncing to make this illusion? Well, if you trace the camera ray, it bounces downward off the opposite underside of the dome, then upward off the floor to the light source. If you take away the reflective floor, then this last bounce is no longer specular, and the virtual sun disappears. So Joe, <laughs> I hate to say this, but I'm pretty sure you don't know what you're talking about. This is not a demo of the 24-hour sun, it's just not. You seem like a nice person who keeps things friendly and chill. You're a very non-confrontational person, and I respect that. You express this attitude of, I'm not a debater, so I don't want to get involved, I just play around with light. Which, I suspect was meant to sound humble, but Joe, you and I both know that almost everyone at that conference thought of you as a leader. You accepted that speaking slot and were happy to teach them. You saw them standing up to take pictures of your slides and asking earnest questions and hanging on your every word. I spoke to probably half a dozen of them who explicitly told me that they were looking to follow your lead on this and because of you, they were not interested in Will Duffy's work. So you know you're a leader and yet you, one, run away from an opportunity to be examined by your peers and two, admit from your own mouth that you don't really know what you're doing, and you're not concerned about it. I don't call that humble. I call that irresponsible. I have nothing against you personally, Joe. But I hope that you either take this to heart and stop spreading a false solution to the 24-hour sun, or that other flat earthers recognize you as a blind guide and stop following your lead. That is, if any of you really care about truth. And don't even get me started on the coffee cup caustic solution. It suffers from many of the same types of issues. Suffice it to say, if you placed a camera in the zone of caustics and looked up, you would not see anything even remotely close to what we see in the real sky. Flat earthers should stop beginning with a pre-selected conclusion and trying to reverse engineer it, because the result is always broken and incoherent. That's called a rescuing device, and it's pretty much anti-science.